Good afternoon, Farah. How are you? Awesome. Yeah, I know, because you're like <laughs> super famous. I'm amazed you managed to fit me into your incredibly busy schedule. Well, you know, Greg, you're my buddy. I uh-huh. always have time for you. Seriously, I do. Absolutely. You know that. Um, I'm just absolutely so excited for you at the moment because things are just happening for you on social media just now. And I just, it's its amazing. I mean, it's amazing to me who knows you because, you know, it's, it's, you've done this really brave step. You know, you've, you've taken a, a step into that world in the first place, which, you know, I remember when you were tentatively going up, I don't know if I want to do a, even a picture on LinkedIn, you know, <laughs> and then it's videos on LinkedIn and then, then it's dancing on TikTok and Instagram reels. And then it's just taken off. I mean, I'm making it sound like you're dancing and that's it. Yep. But obviously, you know, it's it's been this fantastic journey. I'm going to use the word journey, Farah. Um, but to like see it, and it, but it's just suddenly, very, very quickly, just taken off for you. So how, how did this kind of come about in, in, oh. in, in recent terms i mean obviously like i say i mean you've kind of been dipping your toe into like like all of us doing doing your thing and putting up your business posts and blah 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 but then there's this con the, there's this conscious shift in positioning you know your content and the kind of content that you were doing and i think that's the thing that's really really fascinating and then that's the thing that's resonated is that you've set yourself out there as this is who I am, this is my background, accept me for who I am. And your the community that you've been pitching to has just totally embraced you and it's just taken off. Do you know, thanks a lot for that, Greg. And I love your support and how you've supported me throughout the years and we got to know each other. Um, you asked the question, how, what happened? Lockdown happened. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what happened. I think that was a reset button for me to analyze and reflect on my life um, as an individual human being uh, and finding what I really want in life. Because it's not about your nine to five job and going out and working and do, 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 and being a robot. Um, I'm always a, a really into self development, which I've understood me and I've understood my self worth. And how do I give back? How do I help my community? Because as I was growing older and when I was a young girl, I had, didn't have a role model. And you weren't sure if you were doing the things right or wrong. There isn't any right and wrong. So I just used the social media platform and just twisted it a little bit. Really, in the nicest possible way is to have that fun factor and give out facts to people that, mm-hmm. look, these things matter. Um. And let's let's go into that a little bit. I mean, specifically, you know, you're talking about um, you know your your heritage and, and and your culture and the things that have mattered to you growing up and the things that matter to your community. Um, what do you think has been? It, it, has there been one particular thing that's just sort of resonated that then just kind of took off? Do you know what? Um... When you actually think about it, it really goes back. Um, what really infuriates me is that we've got such a beautiful religion. Islam is a very peaceful religion and it's been tarnished with the wrong brush. We get called terrorists, we get called, um, oh, look at that woman, she's wearing a headscarf, how dare she wear it? Um, why is she standing beside us? I mean, I faced racism as I was growing, uh, growing up. And, but then there was a lot of awareness out there as well, but I had to push myself out out of my comfort zone and be who I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of who I am now. Whereas before I used to hide and you're right. I used like LinkedIn, no way, photograph, get away. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing I wanted. But it's really important to be the person that you've envisioned someone else to be so you could uh, have a role model and look up to them. So I decided then why can't I just go out there and just be myself? Absolutely. Yeah. Why do I have to wait for someone else to take that role? Or to give you permission. But I think, you know, the irony is, is then that what's happening is because you're doing this, you know, people in the community are 
seeing you're giving them permission to ask those questions um, and you know to be themselves yeah absolutely and it's really really important is to be yourself why would you be anybody else why would you want to pretend to be anybody, anyone else if you can't just be yourself and be proud of who you are be proud of your religion be proud of your heritage yeah yes i'm living in the western world i've been born and, and bred here this is, this is my my home and just because i wear a headscarf people ask me how long have you been here mm -hmm. like that's so rude mm -hmm. how dare you because i wear a headscarf Mm -hmm. but I'm just like anybody else and these are the these are the problems struggles that our community are going through South Asians all of us we're all going through the same thing so what was it you did first um in terms of content I mean, because because you you started to do specific content in that area I mean because you've always shared positive positivity and, and that kind of stuff uh, and very much the self-development side of things but then there was this very definitive shift that was speaking to your community C can you remember that first post and that and was it a conscious decision because it, it, for, for me who is obviously a close observer you know it it looked like you're like okay I'm gonna do this because it's a brave thing to do because you you know it's not like everybody's just going to accept this and welcome it. You're putting yourself out there to get even more abuse as well um, and not just praise and acceptance from the community. But the thing is, um, it is really hard. You're absolutely right. It's the first thing is to actually put yourself out there and uh, talk about something that's really important to everybody's life. Now, I've gone through so much in my life uh, you'd need a box of tissues for this if I start telling you, Greg. Mm -hmm. But it's how I've overcome those obstacles, which was, has been really, really important for me. And then giving that information to others and letting them know that you're not alone. Yes, I've accomplished what I wanted to do and there's still more to come. But anybody, anybody can be out there and become what they want to become, but they have to overcome a lot of things and be that person that they want to do it be. So you've got to create those foundations. You've got to get that, get yourself out there in order to do that. I started off with TikTok. TikTok, I thought is a great platform. I love it. It makes mm. me laugh, but I didn't see my fit. I didn't see Absolutely. a fit. I'm yeah. like, how does that work? And then during lockdown, and I was telling the kids, I'm, your mom's going on top. Like TikTok and they're like, oh my God, you can't do this. You can't do, you know, you know, my kids are older, mm -hmm. like, oh my God, you're an embarrassment. I was like, well, really? I don't really think so. So we did a call. I was on a call with this global summit and I finished it. And then I don't know what the kids were coming up with. So I, I was just practicing the silly dance. I'm like, oh, this is great. And I'm like, why don't we do it? And we did it. And it was so funny because I got 100 key views mm -hmm. on my very first video. And I'm like, why do people like me? I'm like, oh my God, what have I done? And the kids are like, I don't understand why people like you, mum. <laughs> but it's precisely because it's kind of going against, you know, the, the the idea they think, hold on, what is, you know, she's dressed like that and she's behaving like that. So there's yes. that. And then you're, you're doing that here. So it immediately stands out. Yeah, and that's what I think it was to do. I had a pair of pyjamas on, right? I had a pair of pyjamas on and a top and my, my head scarf because I was on that on, on Zoom because you can only see half bit. And yeah. I just jumped in and we started, started doing it and you need to go back and look at it. It was so good. And then that's, I think, that was the turning point for me is like, oh my God, there are people out there that resonate with what I'm doing. So this is a great opportunity to have do things in a fun way and but still get the message mm -hmm. across. It doesn't have to be lectures. It doesn't have to be so uh, sober. Why should it be? So were you just doing like, you know, the fun kind of dance stuff initially before you then, yep. you know, just for the folks at home who haven't actually see, seen this, uh, you, you know, you've done some of the dance kind of things and, that, and that's, so then visually people are going, huh? You know, does not compute, but then, you gradually start introducing some of these topics uh, and the things you wanted to talk about. Did you consciously 
like make a list or, or you know write down and go you know i want to talk about this i feel really passionate about this and i want to talk about that i don't plan it it's just what i feel sometimes you have a conversation and things trigger yeah things in your mind and your past and then and you get a lot of dms and people asking questions and that gives you the content as well it's like oh my god they're all going through what i went through yeah. So then that gives me the content. So I don't plan it in a way because it's spontaneous and it's just something I just come up with and I'll just put it out there. The fact that you're reacting then to the DMs, I mean, to, to talk about it in a, in a tedious content marketing perspective, you know, you're putting out content, you're analyzing you, the response to it and then changing what you're doing according to, I mean, that's, that's kind of content marketing in a nutshell. Yeah. But what you're doing, it, it just it comes from a, a, a pure, honest place for you. You know, it's it's you're passionate about it and you care about people. So then, when somebody actually then says something and it sparks something in you, oh, well, that seems to resonate with them there. So then you're going to have this cycle of creating content that is just you know resonating with with exactly. People. The thing is, as well, Greg, I am very passionate about empowering women young girls to become independent thinkers yeah because if I look back in my years I wish I was that wish I was that person when I was younger and you're brainwashed into thinking things have to be done this way but then why have they to be done that way why do we have to do that yeah Mm -hmm. who tells us it so we make our own rules but as long as you're doing it the right way I mean I have a daughter who's 25 years old and I've got a son who's 20, who's going to be 21 next week. The thing is, I learned so much from my children. They helped me unlearn so many things that were brainwashed into my mind mm-hmm. at a very early age as they were growing older. And the, diff- the, the situations that they've been through and not fitting in. And those are the things that like, oh, my God, there's a lot of people out there. That are feeling the same way so they never had a role model they mm. didn't have anybody to look up to they look up to their parents so it was really important for me as a parent to go out there and educate other parents that is really important to educate yourself so that you can educate your children then they can educate their children then that's where the compound effect comes were you thinking when you first started doing this kind of content that it would have the kind of effect that it did, or or was it just okay? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be truthful and honest about the way I feel, um, and you know, and see how it goes. Do you know that I didn't have an agenda, mm-hmm. and I still don't have an agenda. Yeah, my only purpose is to get the message across to as many people as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. If it resonates with them, I've done it. Mm-hmm. If not, so be. Mm-hmm. Is there is there a particular area or a particular subject that you find really resonates in in the community that you know more, more than anything that whenever you you speak about that that thing um, that you get the most amount of feedback from? It's gender equality. It's um, the LGBT community. Right. It's mental health. It's cultural differences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all these things are important to people. Women being divorced, Mm -hmm. it's frowned upon to be divorced. So all those issues, they're all cultural issues. They're not religious issues, they're cultural issues. And you've got to separate them, really separate them to understand that this is religion. And if you follow it the way it's said, and it's peaceful, and it's it gives you all the answers. But mm-hmm. as soon as you mix them together, it comes across control and unnecessary power. Yeah, yeah. So are you? Um, you you've got you've got you're creating content here, and then you, you're then able to have direct communication with the, you know the people who are are, are contacting you, um, and you've become for want of a better phrase an agony aunt to to a lot of these people and you know and they can book time with you but what kind of form does that session kind of take 
Uh, you mean the call itself? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is for those people um, who really need to speak to somebody because they're fighting within themselves because they don't know if it's the right thing or the wrong thing because the parents are telling you one thing, other people are telling you other things. It's a struggle inside. Mm -hmm. So I've just opened up the doors for those people who just want that open conversation where they're not judged. Mm -hmm. It's so important not to be judged. I don't claim that I'm a guru. I don't claim that I'm a coach or, or, or a therapist. I do not claim that. However, as a business connector, connecting people, I have access to all these wonderful experts who then I can say, look, these you are need to talk to this person. Yeah. yeah. But let's have that initial conversation. Let's see if we can deal with it in that conversation. Mm -hmm. If there's nothing I can't help with. Or sometimes, Greg, somebody just wants to listen. You just want someone to listen to you. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And if I can help someone go through a difficult situation, you know, and it's, it really hurts me when I think about it, they could be suicidal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes um, it's just that one person that that's listen going to listen yeah. that can you know help. That's right. Um, I think the, the thing that I'm, I mean I'm delighted obviously with with you know what's happening for you, but I think the thing more than anything else is because I know you and I've known you for I guess about four years now. Is that over four years now? Over least, four isn't, years. isn't that oh my goodness? <laughs> is that um, is that it comes from a, a pure place? You know is that this is who you are you're, you're not this isn't an act I mean I will forever remember one of the first ever networking uh, events that I went to and at the time you were working for Nespresso so you, you would be at so many of these kind of networking events but the first time uh, I saw you um, uh, was at, at this event and as soon as I came in you were like you look lost and immediately, you know, em embraced me into, you know, into the room and like, okay, who are you? What is it you do? And, you know, super friendly, but then you need to talk to this guy. You need to talk to this person. Um, but, but that's, that wasn't your job. No. Your, your, your job wasn't to do that, you know, but that's naturally who you are. So I think the thing is, that's lovely about what it is that you're doing now is that it's just, it's so natural to you. It's just, Oh wow! I, I can actually do this and do do good work, but it's it is one hundred percent who you are. And it's so so important. And I keep saying that it's really important to be true to yourself and not go out there with an agenda. It doesn't work. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't work that, and it doesn't work for me either. And I like to see people who are real. I like love to talk to those people who are real. I love to connect and I love to learn from these people. And it's really important for me as a role model for other children, other parents, is to be who you are. It is really important mm -hmm. and not be scared uh, for what others are going to think. So let, let's talk a little bit about the the business side of things um, because. Okay we've been talking for a few years about you setting up this business networking thing and you wanted it to be a certain way and a certain thing. But then obviously COVID comes along. And I mean, I remember you were talking about there's going to be premises and you're going to you do a certain thing. Um, but COVID's come along and it's basically made this happen probably in a better way, yeah, in a more cost-effective way. Uh, and it's sort of accelerated all that process. Um, so you've now got Farah Networking. Farah Networking, I love that. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's my name. It's my baby, it's mine. Um, yeah, you're right. I wanted to open up the Business Cafe, a platform where people can eat, meet and connect. And again, you're, it came up from the idea when you go out to network and people walk in through that door, they're lost. And it's a horrible feeling. It doesn't matter how confident you are. You walk into a room full of strangers. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, who do I speak to? And that was the kind of atmosphere that I wanted to create for the business cafe. So you come along, you order a white cup. Someone else orders a white cup of coffee. It means that you want to connect. And I just wanted to be there and connect them. But it's like that one connection can lead to another one, open up yeah. doors for something else. But, yes, COVID happened. It happens. And I then... 
had to stop and think about my life, my purpose, what is I want. But I'm glad in a way it's happened because it's created so many other opportunities. So I just mm-hmm. took my business idea and just brought it online. Mm-hmm. And I thought, why don't I just do that and and have this platform for the right reasons? Because yeah. I want to create a tribe full of people, a community of like-minded people from all over the world mm-hmm. that can reach out to each other and help and support. And we use the term, um, it's a small world. We used it very loosely before. Now I actually realise it is certainly a small world. Mm-hmm. You can sit we don't have to start up. singing that Disney song, do we? <laughs> oh, no, no, you don't have to. Ooh. I can't say to save myself, don't worry about it. I won't start it. <laughs> You're the singer. I'm not. <laughs> so um, connecting people all over the world was really, really important for me because I made so many connections. Fara networking is there for the right reasons and it is to connect people, with, uh, to have those connections. It's not about what you do because I always say the day you stop selling is the day you will sell. Mm-hmm. By just being you, and people buy people, and that's the message that I want to give to all networkers. People say networking is rubbish, it doesn't work, but if it's done properly and effectively, it works. Yeah, totally. I mean, for me, um, if I hadn't been networking over the past few years, I would be doing nothing just now, because I repositioned my business and what it was I was doing. I'm doing all these different things now. And it's not dependent on, you know, footfall of people coming into my studio or, you know, it, it, it's, it's changed um, what it is I do. I mean, obviously, I still do all those other things, but um, by being, you know, an online uh, version of, of that and doing uh, so many things that way, then it's just meant that, you know, I, I'm able to sustain. But it was all of these, you know, great friends that I've met through networking that, first couple of weeks of lockdown it was like listen greg um how's things going fine okay cool uh, i'm gonna send you a client this way blah 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 you know and stuff like that um and and i'm not a sales guy i'm not i'm, I'm always about um totally the same as you and i think that's why we get on so well is that it's about how can we help somebody how can if, if we're helping you know then long term people actually go you know what he seems to actually be a pretty decent person yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's genuine um and it's it's a, a thing i actually talk about in whenever i'm doing you know workshop workshops and seminars and webinars is that you have to give with that expectation you know yeah. you're, you're offering value to your potential client um and without saying okay you do i'm doing this for you and i expect you to do that or or there's some implied kind of transaction that's going to take that's place nice. at some point um, and I think that makes a lot of difference. It does, absolutely. I've been approached by many people, organisations, who've offered me thousands of pounds, and I'm not lying, thousands of pounds to put my name against it and uh, join forces, you promote my services and you'll get a referral fee. And I've said no, because first of all, you don't know who I am, you don't know what I stand for, and I've got to be very, very clear with my members is what I'm doing. If I was to connect, connect to someone, And then that person after six months understands that she's got commission from that. It's not going to sit well. It's not going to sit well. You've got to do the connection for the right reasons. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It will work in in many Mm -hmm. organizations, but it doesn't work in my world. No, and and I'm the same. I mean, there's, um, I'm I'm not going to be that, that guy that's, you know, like give me that and I'll advertise your thing. You know, if, you know, if I'm going to do a, a, a video for somebody or testimonial about somebody People know that it's because I've used this person's services uh, or bought their product, and I thought there was value in it. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's that makes a huge difference. And it, even just from difference. even just from yourself as well, you kind of like, I would feel unclean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like no, <laughs> but it's it's like, um, but it's I mean, it's different if you're doing a commercial. You know, if somebody paid you to do a TV that's commercial, different. you know, yeah. because then. It, you're obviously you're in that world uh, and people are seeing all right they, they get paid to do this this is this is what it is but it's whenever people are trying to kind of fool the audience by doing something on social that comes across as being maybe perhaps look look like it's value driven but really 
yeah, there's like said a bit of dosh going on behind there, and yeah. and that just always just looks crap. It doesn't work like that. But you know what? The, the biggest thing about networking is is friends that you make along your journey. Mm-hmm. And when I started the business, like yourself, Greg, you were one of those people that reached out and you booked and you supported me, regardless of you attending or not attending. But you were there. You were there. It's That's early so in the morning, far right? <laughs> okay, I was working till two in the morning. I'm like, okay, just let you off it. But do you know what I mean? People like yourself, Jerry, so many other people who reached out and supported me. Because if I wasn't networking, if I hadn't made those friends, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have had the business today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, do you? I mean, I, I know, I know, we're saying about. Um, with the social media side of things, there's not an agenda, and, and, and it is very much a response to kind of you know, the the messages that you get, and it's uh, you know, an organic thing. But um, what about the fire networking side of things? Uh, do you have you know different plans for for the future? Is there is there a way that you want that to change and grow? Yes, it is growing. It's growing um, on a on a global level, and um, to me, it's all about quality, not about quantity. So I'm just trying to grow it in a way that we have the right type of members and for the right reasons. Under the umbrella of Farah, there'll be other stuff coming out as well under connections. So it could be connections, business connections, it could be social connections, it could be just getting people together for various reasons. So there's so much things that you could do under Mm -hmm. that umbrella. Uh, But again, always for the right reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm really looking forward to your next videos on on tiktok i'm not entirely sure what that's going to be but i can't it, even tell you because i don't even uh-huh. know <laughs> but it, it always puts a smile on my face and i'm always i'm always shocked in a such a pleasant way because i know you i'm always like what's she doing that <laughs> you know but um, it's shocking it's so funny when other people come to me and say i saw you on tiktok it's okay when people don't know you and you're watching you and the people yeah. that know you and you're having conversation they'll say farah by the way i saw your tiktok and i'm like oh no please don't tell me that <laughs> it's funny it's like my wife anytime I, I play her some some new music and stuff i'm like listen i'm doing like i, I was working on this track the other day and it's got like this spoken bit in it now anybody else who doesn't know me here hearing it they'll be kind of like Sounds quite cool, quite like that. Right? Um, but my wife just sniggers. She she's just like, really? You're you're like talking at that bit, and she just can't take it seriously because she knows me, you know. Knows. And yeah. and it's it's having the object objectivity to kind of look at the content that you're creating and going, you know what? People in the in in the real world will look at this and kind of go, that was entertaining or you know educational or inspiring. Um, you know, it, it's going to take one of those boxes, you know. It is. You're, you're definitely right. And um, Greg, we were talking about this earlier as well. It's not all hunky-dory. Mm-hmm. When you put yourself out there, people think, oh, my God, this person's doing really well. It's so good. But it's not. It's some people like you and some people don't. Mm-hmm. And you get those hate comments, right? Absolutely. You get those people who are extremists. What you're doing on here, you should be ashamed of yourself. You are teaching our kids the wrong things to do. A question here, actually, um, and especially about that. Do you um, answer these people? Do you take them on? Do you engage in debate with them? Or do you just No, I block them. Move, beat it. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably the best way, you know. It's the best way. I'm not going to boost my energy talking to them because I can't change Uh their perception. If that's who they are, they are. If you're not wanting to listen to what I'm saying, you're not like my content, well, why are you on TikTok? Why are you on Instagram? Uh-huh. Why are you doing that? If you can't create positivity, don't create negativity either. But I, I, it's And that goes to the, the marketing thing as well, as I always say to people that, um, you know, everybody is not your customer. No. You know, and don't be wasting time pitching to somebody who's a no or trying to convert a no to a maybe. To, you know, no. it's like, no, you preach to your tribe, you know, the people who are actually, you know, already there, you know, yeah. and there's going to be millions of them, you know, it's yeah. just, okay, let's, let's, let's find those people rather than try and get somebody from a no to a maybe to a yes. Waste of time. You're wasting your energy. You're just wasting your energy. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. So um, I'm, I'm going to let you have uh, the last word. Um, what, what would be 
you know, your advice to to people who are, you know, wanting to to dip their toe into the world of maybe use social media uh, and to you know, find their voice, um, what would be, you know, a couple of words of advice you could give them? There's quite a lot of stuff that I could give out, but more important, I think, we, is the theme of this conversation that we were talking about is just be yourself and you really need to put yourself out there. There's no right and there's no wrong. If your gut is telling you, follow your gut. Listen to what it's telling you what to do. And if you feel comfortable, just get yourself out there. Because, Greg, we've got all these celebrities now during lockdown. They have to get back up there and they have to create that visibility. There's so many people who are very creative. You're one of them. Very okay. creative. Yeah, yes. Very creative. They've got, they're full of ideas. But the only problem is that they don't have that celebrity status. They don't have that. But I think lockdown has opened up opportunities if you're creative, if you've got a voice, you want to put out a message, if you want to do anything, this is the best time to create visibility and come out of that comfort zone. Yes, there'll be haters. Forget them, block them, beat it. Let's talk to people who, who want to want to listen to us and just, just try it. Just try it and have fun. That's the most important thing. Absolutely. Farah, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome, Greg. Thank you for I having me. I didn't swear. <laughs> How did we yes. do that? <laughs> I think Thanks. it's my presence then, Greg. <laughs> That's it. Very calming That's and reassuring it. presence. Yes. Thanks, Farah. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you.